When we talk forestry plantations, you probably think of a pine plantation. You know the one, green trees shaped like Christmas trees, all in nice, neat rows, and the softwood timber they produce help build our homes right around the country. But there is another type of plantation, hardwood plantations, and it's a quickly evolving sector in the Australian forestry industry. Hardwood plantations have been around for decades and for most of that time their sole purpose has been to produce timber which can be chipped and turned into pulp to make paper and that's still an important part of the industry today. However, these days there's an ever-growing list of new products which are starting to be produced from hardwood plantations. Products such as engineered wood or cross-laminated timber are exciting and paving the way for bigger buildings built from wood. Welcome to Forico's nursery based on the northwest coast of Tasmania. We can produce somewhere between 15 and 20 million seedlings from this nursery. Uh, and at the moment, Forico are producing somewhere around eight to 10 million seedlings from this facility. It's now 25 years old, but it's still considered one of the best containerized forest nurseries even in the Southern Hemisphere and is used as a model for new nurseries as they're established. The first thing you need to start a hardwood plantation is seed, and that seed is collected from the bush, from trees which are specifically grown for that purpose. Trees which show the right genetics to grow straight and tall. It's a bit like breeding racehorses. There's a lot of work that goes into developing a plantation. There's all the tree breeding that happens prior to planting. And in that scenario, what we're trying to do is select the most elite individuals that have the best wood properties and the, the grow the best in the environment. And then from there, what we do is produce a seed orchard. We grow those trees on to harvest, harvest the seed. And then we bring the seed down to the nursery, which is where we're at today and we plant that out uh, into the field. Once the seed's collected from the bush, it goes through a process which is kind of mimicking nature. It involves a kiln to heat the seeds, much like a fire would do in the bush. That causes them to germinate. By the time they reach the nursery, they're ready to plant. Now this is fascinating. Um, Jim, these seeds are for eucalyptus, hardwood, um, and mate, they are tiny. They are like a speck of dust. They are very, very small, and in fact, there's about two and a half to 3,000 of those for every gram, yeah. which makes them worth more to us than gold. Indeed. By weight. It, what it does is, is, is it makes a challenge for you to plant them. I mean, how are you planting these tiny seeds in each of these cells? And we're talking, what, eight million a year? Well, that's right. And as nursery technologies evolve, this used to be done all by hand with tweezers. Yeah, right. Uh, and now we're employing a sewing line here that uh, provides one cell one seed for every cell. There's 81 cells here and we want 100% uh, one to one ratio between seeds and cells. So this plants the seeds and then it puts a bit of fertilizer, a bit of water on them and they are now ready to go and grow. They're, they're ready to grow and in about eight to 10 months time, they'll produce a seedling that looks like this, that's ready for transplanting into our forests. Fantastic. They are very small, I better not snooze. <laughs> Simply, it uses a vacuum drum seeder. So as the potting mix is loaded into the cell and runs underneath the vacuum drum, there are small holes within that drum that suck up an individual seed. And then as that air is released, it drops each individual seed into each individual cell, which sounds like a pretty neat system, but it still does rely on human element just to uh, oversee that and troubleshoot any, any oversowing. Once the cells are planted with a single tiny seed, they're left to grow. And this nursery is based on a system which means the seeds are easily moved from one part to another. The nursery is really built around a two-dimensional trolley system so that at no stage during the seedling's life is it picked up by uh, any of our nursery workers. So it can, it can slide uh, on that two-dimensional trolley system from our sewing line into our glass house, into our shade house, and ultimately through into the dispatch line over that eight to 12 month period. After about 10 to 12 months, the seedlings are almost ready to plant. However, there's one more process which is important in making sure the seedlings have the best possible chance of survival. This is our new netting line, which has been in production for about a week now, and we're reliably producing about 10,000 seedlings a day from this machine, and that's the finished product and this is uh, enabling us to further protect our seedlings from wallabies and possums in the transplanting process. But the, perhaps one of the exciting parts about this is that the bottom of the bag is, is sealed, which, which enables us to actually 
insert other products in this dispatch line, such as fertiliser, right. which is sort of the next evolution. But for the moment, we're really quite pleased with how this is this is going on. And so the seedlings are coming through and into a flat net, which is then rolled around and sealed. Is that's that right. That's this working? is this is actually technology that's used to wrap Mars bars, uh, but we're using a perforated net in this case, which is heat sealing uh, along the edge there. So. Uh, it's an interesting new pro application in a forestry setting. Great, what an excellent innovation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so the netting um, is, is really about trying to ensure that when the seedlings are going out, that they get the best chance to get um, up around about a metre high. And really that's to help get them away from browsing animals. So wallabies and possums, and really we're trying to discourage those marsupials from particularly chewing the crowns out or the top part of the the growing uh, seedlings. So that's what the netting is, is really designed to do. Finally, once they are all wrapped in protective netting, they're ready to plant. And this is where the hard work really begins. Each tiny tree is hand planted. That's more than 10 million a year, and that number is only set to grow as demand for products which come from hardwood plantations increases. But it's a good news story. Look, I still think that our forest industry's yet to have its day in the sun. I think there's a lot of things to be really excited about with forestry, and particularly forest estates like the one that is managing, which is certified to some of the world's best standards and is producing pr products on a sustainable basis that can be used in a whole range of industries, some of which we don't even know about yet. But the ones that really are exciting for me are things like bioplastics, our renewable energy and alternative construction materials such as cross-laminated timber. For me it's a really exciting industry to be involved in uh, and part of, part of the reason I'm excited by, by the industry is the opportunities. It's, it's an industry which is capturing carbon, sequestering carbon, it's sustainable. These are all really great features of the industry that, that we have and helps address some of the issues around climate change. Biodiversity, it's a forest, there are lots of great animals and great flora and fauna which live in our, our forests. The other aspect is that uh, in terms of opportunity, there are a great number of new technologies which are coming into the industry, which means we can grow timber better and use it in, in better, better products into the future. And in terms of tree breeding, there are still a whole lot of technologies which uh, are only just really coming into the industry now. So I really see a great future for, for this industry. And that's why they call wood the ultimate renewable.